Hey guys, I hope you all had a good week. This is a Dell Inspiron 15 3000. Now this is from the batch of 14 that I bought from a single seller who said that they all had motherboard faults. So with this one, I've no hard drive, I've no battery, there's no screen in it. There is just a motherboard and the basic chassis. So like I said, this is described as having a motherboard fault. So I'm gonna take pictures of the board, bring it on the screen, and we're gonna start troubleshooting, see if we can learn something. And this is what that motherboard looks like. Now I did a quick visual inspection of this board. I couldn't see anything really, bar one thing that had me curious. It looks like somebody soldered out the BIOS battery for some reason. You see that there? And I can't imagine why you would do that, bar you might want to take it for use in another motherboard, but then why would you replace it? So I know that somebody has done a bit of work on this before, which sort of annoys me because um, that makes it harder to fix. But I think what I'm going to do to start with is just inject voltage. We don't have an adapter with this, so I'm going to inject voltage into the DC jack and we're going to see what it does. Now before injecting we need to know which pins are positive and which pins are, are negative. I was fortunate to find a schematic for this motherboard so I'm going to work along with this. This is our DC input jack as it appears in the schematic. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 pins so let's mark those out on the board. So here we go, I'll zoom in just a small bit. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So what are those for? Well 1, 2 and 3 are all joined together and they are plus DC in. That's what they're marked at as in the schematic. Pin four, which is here, actually comes along this line and is actually an ID pin. And then the other side of pin four, we have three other pins, five, six, and seven, which are joined to ground. So let's mark in what that looks like. So we've got one, two, and three are DC in, positive. Four is the ID and 5, 6 and 7 are our DC negative or our ground. So what we need to do is we need to inject with our red wire here and our black wire here. I'm going to show you how we do that. I checked the spec for this laptop online, the Inspiron 15 3000 and it uses a power adapter that is 19.5 volts DC so that's what we need to inject in. So let me show you how I do that. So we introduce the power supply first of all and I set it to 19.5 volts. Then I connect my black wire to our DC minus or ground that we've identified from our schematic. And I connect my red wire to my DC plus or my positive, which we've also identified from the schematic. Let me just zoom in a little bit just so you can see that. So black wire going to any of five, six or seven and red wire going to one, two or three. Now when I did that, it pulled a very, very small bit of current and then went to zero. So it seems like we certainly don't have a short anyway. Um, so we need to see how far into the laptop that 19.5 volts is going. Okay, on our schematic we see pins 1, 2 and 3. And it's this point here that I'm injecting 19.5 volts. So we can follow this along this path here. And the next components in line should be these two inductors which are actually in parallel with each other. So we've EL4201 and EL4202. Now, on the actual picture of the motherboard itself, we cannot see those two inductors. We see our three pins here, but there's no inductors here at all. What we do see is there are a number of vias which presumably carry the 19.5 volts across to the other side of the board. So I'm going to flip the board and see if we can find those inductors. I have followed the vias through to the other side of the motherboard and this is where they come out right here. So as I mentioned the component we're looking for next are two parallel inductors EL4201 and EL4202. However I don't see those here but what I do see is the space where you might have the inductors in some implementations. So you here you could put one here and you could put one here. But on this particular motherboard they don't have those two inductors. So what I'm able to do here is I can see the vias come along and straight across onto this track here. So we can skip over these and look for the next component in line. So the next component in line is PU4201. So we're coming down here across the top of this, diode, uh, this diode, which I presume is our TVS diode for protection. And it comes on to the pins here of PU4201. So we're connecting to the source pins of PU4201. 
And this is a good point to take our first measurement. So we want to measure and make sure that our 19 volts is getting through to the source pins of the first MOSFET. So I introduce my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range. I place my black probe to ground and we measure 19.5 volts at this point. So that is correct. Now what we have here with PU4201 and PU4402 is a common configuration of two MOSFETs on the input that we see on most of these types of laptops. These two MOSFETs are controlled by this mat battery management IC right here. This battery management IC controls the gate signal of PU4201 and the gate signal of PU4402 and it can allow or deny the 19.5 volts entry to the system by controlling those gates. So what we need to do is measure the gate voltage on this and see if this MOSFET is switching on and allowing our 19.5 volts through from our source pins to our drain pins. And measuring at the gate pin of PU4201 we find that there is 3 volts at this point. So that's a low signal. I'm not exactly sure what it's meant to be, but it is a low signal. So that should mean our P-channel MOSFET is switching on. So if our P-channel MOSFET is switched on, that should mean that our 19.5 volts is making it from our source pins through to our drain pins. So we need to measure out the drain pins and confirm we have 19.5 volts there. So once again in volts DC, I take my probe, I place it to the drain pin right here. We've actually two sets of two pins, but they're all joined together. So anywhere we measure in each of these is the same as the four drain pins here. So I place it to the drain pins and we measure 19.5 volts at this point. So our MOSFET is turned on and our 19.5 volts is making it through the first MOSFET. So we've confirmed that our 19.5 volts is good to this point and that point corresponds to this point here on our schematic. However our schematic doesn't show where the line goes from here it just labels it as AD positive. Now we need to search further down the schematic to see where that is. When I search for that we find that AD plus goes onto here and onto our second MOSFET. So this corresponds to PU4402 which is this MOSFET right here. Now this is actually the same MOSFET as MOSFET 1 here but it's turned around either way. So our 19.5 is making it onto the four drain pins of this MOSFET. It's the same query that we have of this. What voltage is on the gate pin, is it turning it on and permitting our 19.5 volts from our drain pins onto our source pins. So we're going to measure on the gate and see what signal is being sent from the battery management IC. Now in case there's any ambiguity over this, I just marked in the pins on the IC. So we have our four drain pins on this side which correspond to our four drain pins here where our 19.5 is known to be coming in. And we have our three source pins and our gate pin on the other side that correspond to these. So we want to measure at the gate pin. So once again in volts DC, we take a measurement and we find that there's 1.789 volts on the gate pin. So that's low and as we've already established to switch a p-channel MOSFET on the voltage on the gate must be low. And just to confirm that MOSFET is on we need to make sure that our 19.5 is making it through from our drain pins to our source pins so I just in volts DC once again take a measurement on the source pins of our second MOSFET and I find that there's 19.5 volts at this point also. So what does that tell us? Well that tells us that our whole input section as I mark it out here, looks to be working. So our 19.5 volts that I'm injecting is coming through our first MOSFET to our second MOSFET and I've actually measured past the current sense resistor. These don't fail either but we've got 19.5 volts here. So our main power rail is fine. Now I tried to power it on at this point but literally nothing happened. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to check for my 3.3 .3 volts and 5 volts always on power. So the question now is how do we identify from all of these components which is the IC that is responsible for generating our 3.3 .3 volts and our 5 volts always on power. Well fortunately this time we have a block diagram in the schematic and that tells us that we have a TPS51125 somewhere on the board that generates 3.3 .3 volts and 5 volts. So let's see if we can find that.
Well, I had a look on this and it was easy to find. So the TPS 51125, you can just barely make it out there, 51125S, I think it is. That is the chip that is responsible for generating our 3.3 volts always on, or 5 volts always on. So let's check that. I've marked in the pins on this IC so that it'll be clearer for us to understand. Now what are the important pins on this? Well first of all we have V in right here. Now this is the input that powers this IC. So what we should be expecting here is 19.5 volts from the main power rail should be fed down to this IC to power it. And when it gets power it should produce two always on voltages. So it should produce a 3.3 .3 volts always on which is called VREG3 and comes out on this pin right here it's measurable at this point and it should produce a 5 volt always on voltage which is on this pin VREG5 right here and can be measured at this point. So we should be able to measure those right now with just the power connected even though the laptop is powered off. When the laptop powers on we then have two switched voltages so SW1 is a 5 volt switched output that gives you higher current and SW2 is a 3.3 .3 volt switched output that gives you higher current 3.3 .3 volts power rail. Now with my multimeter in volts DC again I want to take a measurement of our V in. So I place my black probe to a ground which I found on the other side of that input capacitor and I take my red probe and I place it to the V in. Now you can measure at the IC itself but it's tricky because the pins are so small it's normally easier to measure if there's a component connected to it and right here we have V in connecting out on this track to this capacitor and this pad here. So I place it to this side of the capacitor here and we measure 19.5 volts so the IC is getting the proper input. So we've confirmed that the IC is getting the correct input. Is it producing the correct outputs? Well, we want to measure our VREG3 pin to see if we're measuring our 3.3 .3 volts always on. So still with my black probe to ground, I place my red probe to this capacitor right here and I measure 3.3 .3 volts. So we are getting our 3.3 .3 volts always on power. And lastly on this, we just need to measure on our VREG5 pin and see if we're measuring our 5 volts always on power. So I place my probe to this side of the capacitor here and we measure 5 volts. So it looks like our TPS51225 is functioning. It's taking the correct input and it's producing the correct two always on power supplies. Now that we've confirmed that we have our two essentially standby voltages, I need to see that that voltage is appearing on our power switch. So I looked up my schematic and I found that the connector SW1 is for the power button and as you see here SW1 is this right here. And if I mark in the pins on that we can see what they are for. So number one appears to be going to, is that going to ground? Seems like it's going to ground. The two is also going to ground. Uh, three is not connected but four is labeled here as KBC underscore power button. Now KBC is keyboard controller or also super IO EC chip whatever you want to call it. But this is the power button signal that is sent down to our super IO chip. So we need to measure on pin 4 we should be finding 3.3 .3 volts on this pin and we should find that when we plug in our power button and press the power button that 3.3 .3 volts should go to 0. Measuring in volts DC once again, I place my black probe to ground and my red probe to pin 4 and when I place it to pin 4 I measure 3.3 .3 volts. So our 3.3 .3 volts always on power is present at our power button and what I also did was I plugged in the little daughter board with the power button on it, pressed it and it went to zero as it should. So there is no issue with the power button section at all. The next question is, is that power button signal being received at our super IO chip? So we need to find our super IO chip and check for voltages on that. And this is our super IO chip right here, or KBC as it's referred to in our schematic. On the right I have the schematic with all of the pins on it. As you can see there's a lot in it and it would be in no way feasible to actually try and check every single pin. But there are two things we need to check here. 
First of all, we need to verify that that signal from the power button is getting to this IC. And second of all, we just need to confirm that this IC itself is getting an input voltage. As you can see, there's a VCC, VCC, VCC. There's five pins where we should be getting an input voltage of 3.3 volts. So let's first of all check the signal from the power button. Now pin 117 right here is PM underscore power button. So this is where we should be expecting to find the power signal sent from the power button. I've marked that in here. As you can see it's tiny but I've zoomed in to try and make it legible to everybody. So with my multimeter in volts DC I placed my black probe to ground and measured at that pin. But what I found was that it measured zero volts no matter what I did with the power button itself. I think usually what happens is that you should have 3.3 volts on this or somewhere near it and when you press and hold the power button the power button goes to zero and sends zero volts down to this pin but this is receiving no signal from the power button. So we're not getting a signal from the power button the next question is is this IC getting any power at all? Now as we saw from earlier in the schematic the VCC input voltage for this IC comes in on 19, 46, 76, 88 and 115. I can mark in those pins on the IC and what we can see is that there is one down here on 76 that is connected to a capacitor so this makes a nice point where we can measure. So in volts DC once again with my black probe on ground I placed my probe to the capacitor and there was no change on the multimeter. So there is zero volts on all of these pins. I actually went around and checked them all so this is not getting any input voltage. So it looks like we found a reason why this laptop is not turning on. Either the Super IO itself has a problem or we have a problem with the circuit that provides the power to the Super IO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the video here because we've gone through a lot in this one and I'm going to pick this up next week but I really do want to pick this up from here because this is a point at which we need to learn more on on the Super I.O. checking for it and I also need to take that brave step of desoldering it and putting a new one in. I've ordered a couple of these and I'm just trying to get my skills up to scratch on a couple of second hand boards before I take this on. So please post any comments down below and I will post the second part of this as soon as I have it done. Thanks for watching.